space so that what you see is this glowing light that's kind of disembodied. Um, and this is a crash wall, which is a really cool feature of dark rides. Um, and so this notion of essentially taking the floor plan and dissolving it so that in our experience of the ride, all of that goes away. And instead, we're in this place of mystery. Um, and, and this is a, a beautiful floor plan uh, by Abstract Concepts Workshop that tries to bring together story and plot by showing you the uh, field of vision each of those little carts as they're moving along the track. Um, and the carts are designed to like spin suddenly and give you this new uh, image. And we can see in the floor plan these kind of uh, series of scenes or um, uh, scenarios as you move through that dark ride. And that's the story, right? The story is that unfolding of the space in time. So every story is a path, and some of our most famous stories, the path is so important, it's actually a character in the story. So in Hansel and Gretel, the path with the cookies is really a character in the fairy tale. Um, the yellow brick road is a character in The Wizard of Oz. Mad Max Fury Road is the road, right? You can't have the movie without the road. And when we look at designing paths in a garden, you know, one of the things you're always told is to make sure it has a curve. Uh, you don't want to make a straight line to the garbage can. Right, you want some mystery there. And so this beautiful travel poster gives us this curve so we don't know quite where we're going. And we're rewarded for coming up close by baby mushrooms <laughs> so we can discover along the path. This amazing painting is like, oh my god, what did he do? He made this road that goes straight to the horizon, uh, but there's a turn. And that turn gives us that sense of mystery and possibility. So there's the geography of the path, but there's also the emotions of the path. And experienced designers um, often create emotional journey maps in order to anticipate where users will be rewarded and where they will get pissed off and be delayed and foiled in whatever it is, whatever task they're trying to, to complete. So we have this up and down, right? This mountainous up and down of emotions. And it may remind you of a roller coaster, which is designed to take this energy from up down. Um, and many people have compared roller coasters to the arc of a story, that a story begins in a low point with exposition, and it builds, and it goes up and up and up, and it's literally gathering energy as the story reaches the top, and then whoosh, it comes down, and that's the story. And this beautiful um, Illustration by Grant Snyder from the New York Times Book Review. He went wild with this metaphor of the story as a roller coaster in a theme park and really had fun with all the parts of the story and all the problems and flaws in a poorly constructed story. Um, so I love these kind of diagrams because I'm a designer and I love diagrams. And they really helped me understand the idea of structure and experience as something that we can visualize and also communicate to other people, right? To clients and to stakeholders. Um, this is a, a beautiful emotional journey map uh, by an exhibition designer. Um, and he uses these maps to plan an exhibition 
and to look for the points of emotional intensity. Um, so where that path gets really red, that's the place where visitors are going to have a very intense experience and maybe you need to pause afterwards, right? You don't want everything to be intense. Um, so I saw this beautiful diagram and I, I, I asked um, the designer if he could show me one actually applied to an exhibition that he was working on. And he was working on an exhibition about the American Civil War. And the math looks like this because it's all emotional and it's all disturbing, intense material. So I hope they put some benches somewhere in this exhibition when they finished it. Um, so that brings me to the man and the hole. Not all emotions are fun and happy. We go to experiences that scare us um, and teach us about bad things in history. The great postmodern novelist Kurt Vonnegut had a theory that all literature could be mapped as an emotional roller coaster between positive emotions and negative emotions. So at the beginning of the story, the man is happy and living his life. Then he falls in a hole. This is bad. The people of the town come together, get him out of the hole, and whoosh, we're back up to happily ever after. And he believed that every story could be diagrammed in that way. I thought, well, that's very interesting. What if I diagram my talk today as a kind of roller coaster between good um, and great experiences? I look at a little theory, oh, and some examples, and then some more theory, and some more examples. And we go up and down, up and down. I thought, well, that looks like a very boring roller coaster. Um, maybe we need to have some of those peaks be bigger and higher. Um, maybe we need to have some variety in this hillscape. And maybe there needs to be an emotional plunge. Maybe we need the man in the hall to come back sometime today. Um, so in, in, in my talk, I'll, I'll show you some theories, I'll show you some examples. A lot of the examples will <clears throat> be perhaps surprising. They are not theme parks. In fact, they are not even theme park adjacent. But what they do is they show how the storytelling that you all put into your work um, affects everything in design and lots of other kinds of environments we all live in and work in every day. So let's apply the idea of the man in the hole to Cinderella's customer experience. Okay, can you with me? Okay, so we're going to imagine Cinderella as a customer. So in the beginning, she's in a very bad place. She has a miserable life, nothing to wear, and no ticket to the ball. So what does she do? She downloads the Fairy Godmother app. This is fantastic. She loves it. <laughs> Very happy customer. She gets an amazing outfit. She gets an amazing ride. The bad part is the curfew, right? Something shitty is going to happen at midnight. But that's the deal. Right, she knows about it. So, she goes to the party. She's having a great time. It's getting to be really close to midnight. So she runs down the stairs to the parking lot. She knows she's got to get into that carriage before it turns into something she doesn't want to get home in. And what happens to Cinderella? Surge pricing. What a bummer! What a buzzkill! <laughs> so, now we've got terrible ratings on this app. So the designers back at Fairy 
spiritgodfather.com. They're like, what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a new feature. It's the lost and found feature. And we're going to get this girl her shoe. We're going to violate her privacy, find her home address. We're going to make the driver pay for it. And we all know what happens when Cinderella gets her shoe back.
experience. Um, so I wonder, has anybody been to an IKEA store? <laughs> Did you ever feel that you were in a maze? Well, actually, I did some academic research on this, and I learned that, indeed, there are IKEA studies. Perhaps some of you have written them or read them. And IKEA is not a maze. IKEA is a labyrinth. Okay? These are two different archetypes. The maze is designed to keep you lost, and a labyrinth is a fixed path where you actually don't make decisions about where to go. You just stay on the path. And these are two different design principles and two different experiences for a user or a visitor. Um, and in fact, the labyrinth is this ancient meditative space. And you don't even need a space. You can actually just use your finger and trace a labyrinth and it takes you to the center and at the center is a revelatory spiritual experience so this is the labyrinth of the chartreuse cathedral in france and people walk this labyrinth starting at the outside and finally coming to the middle which is this transcendent heaven-like space Space of self-discovery and a meeting, you know, meeting with the divine, um, all through following a path. And it's kind of like the path of the dark ride, right? Where we don't make choices. The ride is on a track, and it takes us where we need to go. Um, and these have become labyrinths have become very popular as a kind of new age. Experience. You can build one in your own garden. They have a social element because you're seeing other people come near the, the center but also move far away from it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, so there's your social experience. Um, but transcendent. So while we're on the subject of spiritual transcendence, we better go back to Ikea. <laughs> so Ikea is a hero's journey where you start in the parking lot, you enter into this blue and yellow building where everything is branded and signed and creates a coherent visual space, and you follow the path exactly as you're told to. There's even a yellow brick road. <laughs> it is shiny, it has a curve, it has arrows that are projected as light down onto that path to keep you going along your way past all these gorgeous vignettes and perfect homes. And eventually you descend to the belly of the warehouse and you finally buy your stuff. And at the end of the road, down there, at the end, is the final hot dog. Now this hot dog is so cheap, they're paying you to eat it. <laughs> because they know you will not survive and make it back out to the parking lot without that hot dog. You know, instead, you will freeze to death like Jack Wilson at the end of The Shining in the maze outside that crazy hotel. While we're on the subject of hot dogs, <laughs> we will now discuss themes. You may think that a Super Wawa store on Route 41 in central New Jersey is not a themed environment, but in fact it is, okay? Perhaps it's not about haunted real estate. Perhaps it's not a Harry Potter experience. Perhaps it's not a climate change disaster ride. Do we need that in Florida? Do we need a ride for that? Um, no, this is a dramatic narrative. This is the big themes, right? The big tough stuff. This is man versus self. Okay, so you enter, 
always from the parking lot. You unburden yourself. <laughs> Empty thy bladder, that's really what brought you here. <laughs> Refill thy bladder. <laughs> and now you pass by the Garden of Eden, <laughs> where you were asked to buy a salad or some carrot sticks. It is your choice to make. No, I think it's easier to get that hot dog. And the theme here at the Super Wawa store is all about self-service. It's all about the individual traversing this amazing space full of opportunities and making their own decisions and filling their own cup and placing their own order for a cappuccino without having to talk to anybody. I love this interface. It makes it so easy to get exactly what I want. Um, and I asked the barista, how do you like it? Do you like it that people are ordering their stuff through a touch screen rather than talking to you? And she says, absolutely, I don't want to talk to you people. <laughs> so much easier this way. Um, and then you begin to leave, give up to Caesar, this incredible in the round cash register. Last minute opportunity to buy some gift cards, and finally, condoms and aspirin, right? What John Barnes calls a little fill-up of joy and surprise at the very end of the story. Um, and a final purge, okay? Um, in, my, in my last few minutes here, I'll talk about the anti-experience, the thing we all hate, which is waiting, which is the man in the hall. He's back. As we learned this morning, there is a whole science and industry around predicting how long you'll have to wait in line for your favorite attraction at Disney World. Nobody wants to wait in line. 300 minutes of your life spent waiting for this roller coaster. I'm not sure that I would do that. Um, I must say, there's no place I'd rather not be waiting than the emergency room. And it turns out this is a place where you often have to wait way more than 300 minutes for your services. And people actually get violent in emergency this is a place where waiting causes a great deal of distress. And so some graphic designers and architects got together and decided, wow, if we just made signage that explained to people where they are in the process of being served at the emergency room, a lot of their anxiety would go away. And that what really makes us angry and upset when we're waiting is not knowing how long the wait is. So I'd much rather be told it's 300 minutes than wait 15 minutes but not have known what the duration would be. So beautifully use of design to solve the man in the hole problem. Um, and my final example is from a place I'd even less like to be than the emergency room, which is the New York City Department of Probation, which looks like this. Right? It's the place where people are sent to wait. To wait to see their probation officer, to check in, to check out, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so the New York City Department of Probation got together with some designers to try to improve that experience and to create activities that people could actually do and learn from during that period of waiting. Um, and the goal was to make your experience in the probation office less like this, waiting, 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 and more like going to a bank, right, where service is designed to move people in a quick and meaningful way. Um, so we have arrived um, through the molasses swamp to the promised land of the little house made out of gingerbread. Um, and thank you very much for um, for listening. Questions? Uh, so, I guess my first question is, are you saying that the movie Labyrinth is actually, in fact, a baby? 
Matrix. <laughs> I confess I have not seen that, that movie. So there is some slippage in the way the term is used in popular culture. Rather, like there is slippage between our use of the word font and typeface. I can explain that to you later if you're interested. <laughs> um, so even though we kind of use these terms often interchangeably, if you look at the history and theory of mazes and labyrinths, they're, they're quite different. And the labyrinth is conceived of really as a spiritual experience. And mazes, which were introduced in the 17th century as a kind of garden um, entertainment, are actually a secular form. Uh, it was meant to be a game and a puzzle, as well as very beautiful decoration, um, as opposed to this uh, ritual track. Um, yeah, great question, and I will check out the movie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're fantastic. storytelling is, um, the idea of an arc, the idea of energy that changes over time, like not something that's flat, um, the idea of, uh, of emotion, of adding emotion to action, which is really you know, what a, a story is. It has an action, but it makes us feel something. If it's only action, it's not a true story. Um, so that's really been inspiring to me, really in everything from graphic design to uh, serving dinner. You know, it all, it all has to have an arc, it all has to have um, a change in energy. Thank you for your question. Hello. I'm over here. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's a beautiful question, thanks. Well, one thing is lots of pictures. There's a few copies of my book around. It's, it's full of uh, diagrams and illustrations. I got to work with a great illustrator to create some of the illustrations. Um, so people want to experience things in multiple media. And this is key to accessibility. It's key to storytelling, right? We want people to um, when they hear a story told, they want them to see it in their mind, right? Um, and we want people, when they see a picture, to understand what the content is. So, so to me, uh, mixing words and images has always been the key. Thanks for your question. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Ellen Luckman.